A warm welcome to all for today's session on business processes. Today's topic is about a basic introduction to setting up business processes. This webinar is aimed at SupportWorks administrators who are new to the concept of business processes or those that want a reference point to review them. It is not aimed at those with an advanced knowledge of creating business processes. The topics we'll cover today are the following. What is a BPM, otherwise known as business process management? Where is business process management used? The prerequisites for setting up business processes, the components required, and at the end, I will demonstrate a business process in use. At the end of today's session, you have the opportunity to ask us questions. What is a BPM? SupportWorks provides business process management module, which allows you to design multiple stages of work that different people have to carry out. This is to service a request or an incident. It follows a workflow that is followed in a precise manner, either pre-configured to follow a certain pattern per organization. The following core classes have business processes associated with them. Change management, incident management, problem, release, and service requests. For example, in the incident process, different organizations may have different types of workflows to solve specific types of requests. For example, one organization may have first line, second line, Another organization may just work with one line and have separate workflows assigned to different service desks per tasks. The most common, commonly used scenarios for a business process would be a service request. For example, a new starter service will have different methods of serving the request as opposed to issuing a new equipment to a user. There are main things to consider when designing a business process. The business process module allows you to implement predefined processes. Please note that it is not a visual design tool like Draw.io or Visual Studio. Before you consider even implementing a business process, we recommend that a step-by-step -step instructions or workflow is designed before you even create that. Some of the main things to consider when designing a business process in SupportWorks, they include the ability to add authorizers, activities, milestones, and perhaps email triggers at certain scenarios. Please include them in your workflow if applicable. In my experience as a consultant, a customer typically hands me a predefined workflow very similar to my diagram as shown. You can also hand across some step-by-step -step instructions which we can follow and design. As a consultant, I will study this with you and see how we can implement this within SupportWorks. For the purpose of this webinar, I've designed this particular workflow for a new equipment loan process. For example, just to quickly run through this, it will start. I will assess the, the form or the, the request. I will set a stager that says the information is complete. I'm happy with, the, happy with the information. Then I'll forward it to the next stage. I'll make sure that this is feasible. Can my organization be able to fulfill this request? Once I'm happy, I'll move this on to the next stage, which is the authorization stage. So in this stage, we have authorizers that will say yes to this, this uh, request and put forward to the next phases. So if they approve this, then work will be carried out in the work in progress stage. Once that's been completed, then the request will be closed. If it is rejected, then it will follow a separate workflow route where there will be status that will say it's rejected. 
an email will be sent across to the user who requested the new equipment to let them know that this is not uh, be, this is not able to be fulfilled, and then the service request will have a stage that says it's not uh, it's, it's been resolved, and then the service request has been cancelled. So this is what I've uh, designed. Obviously, this is a very simple uh, process. Uh, you may have a more complex process which we can uh, look at as well. So if you look at the individual components when designing a business process in SupportWorks, the first thing we need to consider is a process stage. A process stage is a discrete step in a process which requires input or decision. Here, you can specify conditions or automatic actions applicable to any stage. This could occur at the start of a stage, when the stage status completes, or when the stage status changes. A stage can have a number of possible results which can determine where it will come next within the workflow. A stage may have one or more associated tasks. A stage could be triggered by the completion of the previous stage, which could be done manually. As you can see, the highlighted boxes in red, uh, these are examples of some stages in my process. So this would be the assessment stage, and next stage would be the feasibility stage. I'm now going to demonstrate how to configure stages in SupportWorks. So first of all, we'll go to File, Manage Settings, and Process Settings where the business process is stored. As you can see here, these are all the different call classes. So Change Process is shown. You've got Release Processes, Service Processes, Incident Management, problem processes, and service management. And these have all associated uh, BPMs associated with them, as you can see in the list format. So I'm going to go to service processes. And as you can see there, here's a list of all my service processes that are within the system. So I've created already created a template called Equipment Loan, which uh, I'll show. And this Equipment Loan will have the business process that I've created uh, for it. So if I double click on that, as you can see, the, there's a the business process Equipment Loan, and I've named it, uh, it named the process Equipment Loan, giving it a brief description. And at the moment, I've created it active, but here you can see the different process stages. So I've got assessment, feasibility check, authorization, completed or rejected. So um, as, you can see, as you can see from my diagram, um, you can also copy a, a business process as well if you want to copy it and delete it and view and create new. So um, I've created additional workflow called work in progress. I'm going to add that to my stage. I'm going to give it a title, work in progress. going to copy the add that record and you can see it's right at the bottom. I want this to occur after the authorization phase according to the diagram. So I'm going to click up and it's going to just go underneath work uh, authorization. So um, that's the process that's been set up and I can now save that and it's now part of the equipment loan process. The next thing to consider are status values. A status value is a predefined state that a stage can be at any given time. This will indicate to a user that a certain service action has been performed, if the action is in the process of being carried out, or that some result is being awaited. It should be worded in a manner that would make sense to the users in the context of the procedures that they are expected to follow. During the life cycle, the status values can be changed manually by authorization or completion of tasks. Going back to the equipment business process I've created, 
It's going to demonstrate this. So equipment loan is a process. I'll create a status value. So in order to create a status value, I go to the process stages, and I'm going to add this to. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you existing one assessment, which is the first stage, and it's got two values. Awaiting assessment, which is the current status when I log in, and assessment complete. So once I check assessment complete, it should hopefully move on to the next value. All right, so I'm now going to add this for work in progress. So I'm just going to uh, move this across, close that, and I'm going to go to work in progress stage, double click on that. And to go to status value, so I'm going to think about what will happen when it's in work in progress in the current form and what will happen when I push it forward to the next stage. So I would create a placeholder, work in progress in uh, square brackets. Let's add that record. Now I'm going to add my second status work complete. And here you have two status values for the stage work in progress. So the next thing to consider would be authorizations. This is usually processed in change management or service requests. It can be done in instance as well. But the reason of authorization, you can define whether that stage requires authorizations. Authorizations can be added on the fly as well. So you don't have to have hard-coded analysts or managers assigned to the authorization. You can choose to have the option to add authorizations whenever that uh, process appears. Authorizers can be analysts using the support works client. Customers and customers managers using the self-service portal. Or they could be affected business areas using emails from email templates. We've already created an authorization stage and we're now at the required Authorization. So if I go to my uh, business process, if I go to the authorization stage, I'm now going to add the required authorization. So in order to do that, you go into the authorization tab. And this, this check will always need to be added to activate this authorization phase. And you can see there, authors can also be added on the fly. So if an analyst has required permissions, then uh, they can be added as an alternative, for example, if one of the managers are absent. Okay, let me uncheck that. You can add, so add a new authorizer. So click New. And I'm going to create this as an analyst. And then you can choose the authorizer uh, based on the group or the individual user. So you want to choose analyst, and if I click on the button, and this should show me a list of analysts. I'm going to choose, should I choose? Yep, I'll choose Daniel Matthews as my click on OK. And then you can add the relevant weightings. So to reflect the fact that some authorizers, authorizers are more critical in approval than others. For example, a financial authorizer uh, is more likely to purchase a purchase, uh, position, has, has more weight than the technical authorizer. So for this purpose, I'm going to give the analyst 50%. And the total, total weighting by default is, 50, uh, is 100. So in order for this, this uh, to proceed, I'd add, have to add another, another authorizer or authorizers that add to a total of uh, 100. So I'm going to add another authorizer, Gary Simmons. I'm going to give him another rating of 50. So if both of these authorizers accept, then this will push the business process to the next level. And once I've done, you can see both analysts are in there. And then click Save, and there's your authorizers added.
the next thing to consider would be process tasks. A stage may have one or more tasks associated with it. This will allow you to define the task involved in the stage of a process. In SportWorks, process tasks are associated, that are associated with log requests are created as separate requests. They're individually assigned and progressed. These tasks can be independent or can be included as dependencies in sequential order. I will now demonstrate the creation of a task. So I'm going to add this task to the work in progress stage. So add possibly order the new all the new equipment and to deploy could be some things that could, could consider. So if I go on to the tasks tab and I'll create two tasks for the work in progress. So if you can disable manual stage progression to prevent the process being moved manually to the next stages until all the tasks are completed. So I'm going to check that. Okay. And tasks can also be added on the fly. Um, so they have to be hard coded into the system. You just add one if required. So to check that, I'm going to check that for now. So I'm going to create a new task and give the task a title. So I'm going to add new order. So I'm going to order a equipment. So let's copy the description. And then you can add a support group or a specific analyst to service this task. So if we go to the support group, I'm going to choose an analyst. So you can assign this task to I know, the purchasing team. I'm just going to add it to the administrators. They will do this uh, simple request. Assign a priority to it. Okay. We'll look at the predecessor in the next, next one. So I'm going to add this record. And this, this task has now appeared. Okay, so once a save, uh, change has been saved, you've got other options as well uh, to do this uh, task. So um, you can click a new one. I'm going to add the uh, deploy the equipment. Okay, just uh, copy that. Can assign a predecessor. So predecessor means that this will not activate until the new order equipment has been completed. So if you choose that, this will not appear in a task until I finish or completely resolved the the pre-existing pre uh, task. Can add an analyst to this and a priority because they're mandatory fields and save that add that record. So once that's complete. You have other options in the system. So you've got the option to set fail set status, complete, and OK of the task. So when a task fails status, you define a status value change based on a task failure. So it can be stayed, set to any of the status values defined previously for the stage. So I'm going to choose one. I'll leave, I'm going to leave it for now. And when all tasks have failed, you can set the status of the task to, or the, the business process to task failed. And when, there's a, when all the tasks are completed, you can set the task date to task OK, or you can set this to next stage. Um, for, so I always, I always usually set this to the next stage uh, where it's going to be progressed to. And that's your um, tasks have been completed. Okay, and you can just double check that to see the tasks are in there. Yeah. So next uh, thing to consider would be stage conditions and actions. A condition is a testable prerequisite for triggering a set of defined actions within a stage. They can be tested against a single or multiple criteria, including stage status and uh, request status. These conditions, one set, can have conflicting actions, and the actions will initiate once they are met. These are often used to advance your progress through each stage as conditions change such as when a stage is authorized. 
or even when sending out emails to customers to inform them of the change in status. To create a condition, we can take a look at one I've created earlier for assessment. So we'll go to assessment, and I'm going to go to on status change. So you can see here, assessment, this what happen is, yeah, so this is based on the status values awaiting the assessment, which is the current stage, and assessment complete. So once I select assessment complete, um, as my status change, then this will move the tasks to feasibility check. So assessment to feasibility. So you can see here, assessment to feasibility check, the condition um, equals is the current condition, so where this will trigger. So once I've actually got the current condition to assessment completed, the action will now change. So you can see this um, set process to um, the workflow equipment loan. This, it will move the, the, to feasibility check, and the status will be awaiting feasibility check. So this is the trigger that I would set when I uh, set that condition awaiting um, assessment complete. You can also assign multiple other triggers uh, to this, which we'll take a look at um, later on. So I'm going to add a condition to a work in progress. So if I go to the on status change, so I'm looking at my current status values, work completed is going to be my current where I'm going to actually set the trigger. So that's the conditions. If I select work complete, then what will happen? I would assume, I would, I would hope that would move the, the task to uh, job completed uh, stage. So if I go to, uh, yes, yeah, so a job completed stage, it will move on to this, this task. So if I open up work in progress and go to on status change and to add that, click on new. And give this a title. And in order to, to set the condition, you got the, um, just going to rename this one again, I think, work in progress completed to, so this, this for me to understand that um, the naming conventions are, are consistent. So the test column always choose business process uh, management status and BPM status as a current condition equals, and test value is the current stage, so it will be work completed. So and if you click add, you've added the condition. And now once we set this condition, what will happen? This will set up the status. I would want the business post to move this to the next phase. But you can do many things within this uh, within this um, uh, status condition uh, send actions. So in your request settings, you can set uh, a diary update. So when I select that value, it will perform my diary update. And the automatic diary update uh, tab appears. You can add a predefined description each time. You can add it to a watch call um, if you want to. So I'm going to move this to the equipment loan business process and it's going to go to the job completed and this will change the status to job closed because we've completed this, this task. You can also move this to a group or now list, to a different group, um, maybe line two, line three. You can set progress milestones. And you can email recipients, um, and also, yes, yeah, you can specify a mail. You can specify a specific email template to be triggered. So if I set this this parameter, this could set a email to the customer. Certain, okay, this this email has been moved or closed. All these things to consider. So I'm going to save that. So what one thing to note, I would want to have at the start of the, the business process on start to have a default value 
of a rating assessment, and this is how to uh, to create that. So you add the business process, uh, uh, the test conditions, but instead of having a parameter in the um, in the uh, foster fees, you leave it uh, blank. This will automatically default to a weighting assessment as the as this as a default uh, value. So that that's the one that will be uh, be kept. One thing is not mandatory, but you may wish to have milestones or the process uh, progress that's to be associated with the task to be displayed. Stages can be associated with milestones and they can be defined as standard actions which are either at the start of a stage or on a status change from that stage. They can be associated with progress status to display progress of a business process once a task is completed. And you can see an example of a creation of a process progress uh, below. I'm going to show how to create a process progress. And if I go into my business process, and if you go to the process progress tab, you can see that I've already got one there called authorization. So once I go to authorization stage, it will show up as 50% of the work has been completed. That's my milestone that's been done. I'm going to add one uh, feasibility, which is going to go 25% just before the authorization. So give this a name and give it a percentage. So once the feasibility has been completed, what's the potential work that's been done? So I'm going to say 25% of it has been completed. Add a description, and once it's been completed, you've got a message that's been working, also a failure message as well. Okay, if I save that. And in order, so I'm going to move that up just before authorization. And in order to associate this to feasibility, I would assign this if I double click on feasibility check. If you go to the on status change, so once it's been once it's gone to feasibility authorization, I know that the feasibility has been completed. If I just double click on that, go to standard actions. If I go to the set progress, and you have a list of my progress milestones, I'm going to assign this to feasibility completed. And that's your business process uh, set up, um, your uh, process progress set up. Support Works offers the visual representation tool which will graphically display your business process. You're able to edit the business processes by selecting the relevant node. You can right click each of the nodes and you can edit those within the business process, uh, vis the visual business process. Some people prefer, myself, I prefer to edit the business process using the process settings. But again, if you're a visual person, you can use this uh, tool um, to, to, do, to do that. So I'll demonstrate this. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the business process that I've created in relation to a service request to show you how this pans out across the scale of the of the service request. So if I go to support works, this is the view that you will see. If I go to business process management, you will see the, the module and you see my equipment loan process I've, I've set up, but this is shown graphically. If I scroll down, and from here you can see if the workflow is correct and in order. And if there are any broken nodes or orphan stages, this will be displayed. So I'm just going to log a new service request. I'm going to log it to Alan Castle. You can fit in all his relevant details. I service to this. Okay. 
can set the process, which is equipment loan, and you'll see once I log in and accept this call. Here, here you also got a certain option to set other process as well. Just to save that when it's not in an email box, click on OK. And if we go to service desk, under my service requests, if I'm assigned to or part of the group, I'll see all the service requests that are in the system. Then go all the way to the bottom and select the service. You can see the waiting assessment as the page holder that we created. I'll double click on that. It's going to minimize my screen because of the resolution. Okay, you can see the, the state status is awaiting assessment. So, me as the analyst, I would need to uh, assess this form. And typically what I do, I just go to update call, make a note that says, yeah, I've uh, completed and accepted, um, assessed it, it's fine, if all the information is correct, update this call. Again, you can have an email triggered out to the customer or to the analyst in question. I'm going to move the uh, data status to assessment complete. Once that's done, I'm going to save that. And you'll notice that it's automatically gone to the awaiting feasibility stage. And it's got the stage status awaiting feasibility check. So I'll do the same thing again. I would uh, check if the, 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 the service request is feasible. Um, and then go to feasibility complete. Save that. I would ignore the, uh, the message at the bottom. It's due to uh, uh, mail I've not set up. But if I go to the authorization, um, so you move the, the task, the state, um, service request authorization phase. I've got two authorizers, Daniel and Gary, which we set up. And both these analysts would need to authorize it to make the score to 100. So um, Daniel would log in to SportWorks, and he would have the authorizations if he accepts this. And it's 50% complete, so uh, Gary has to authorize this as well. If I say there's changes, and then once it's done, it automatically moves on to next work in progress. These are blanked out because there are tasks associated with this, uh, with this stage. If I go to tasks, there's only one task displayed. We created two. This because of the dependency, and this will not appear until the new order equipment task has been completed by the analyst. If I click on that, and as an analyst, I would, if it's assigned, uh, do work to this task. Okay, if I go to task status, I can assign this. But if I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you how this looks in the service desk view. So under service desk analysts, we'll have my tasks. Uh, because it's not assigned to me, um, it's not going to be shown under my tasks, um, but you've got the option to filter the tasks, etc. But yeah, here all the tasks that are, that are assigned will be displayed here. If I go back to that uh, business, uh, that service request, I'm going to manually um, close this task. So task status, I'm going to say it's successfully completed. Save that, and you notice the second task has appeared. So deploy equipment user task. The wrong one. So now task, uh, yeah, I'll close this task. Have this done. And then it moves on to the next stage. Um, stage stage is uh, job closed. And the, uh, the task is completed. And the business process um, has completed as well and you're now able to, uh, to close the call. So this really, in essence, how a business process linked to a call class will work. So I hope this, uh, this is a useful guide, a beginner's guide to setting up workflow in SupportWorks. This, this will now be presented onto our YouTube channel, where you'll be able to view this and use it as a reference tool uh, going forward. Thank you very much for attending. This is Nadim. I hope to speak to you soon.